E rangi e papa, whakarunga mai, koe a ki tēnei karanga o te wā nei, pūrau Hawaii ki, ki te kaupapa o te wā, mate i te mate i te pā hana hana o wai ori ake nei, nau mai, oro mai ki tēnei marae tapu o te ao tūroa nei. Ko te kawa o te ora, ko te kawa o te ora, ko te kawa o te ora tēnei katakina, ko te kawa o te ora tēnei kahikina, Oi, tapu, tapu mai, koe a ko rangi e tū nei. Tapu, tapu mai, koe a ko papa e takoto nei. Tapu, tapu mai, koe a ko tēnei mana. Mana mai, mana atu. Mauri mai, mauri atu. Tapu mai, tapu atu. Tiaki mai, tiaki atu. Haumi e, hui e, taiki e. Kei ngā tai o te motu, ngā hau o te rangi i tēnā koutou katoa. Koe nei te reo aroha, te reo mihi e pariatu nei ki a koutou kua tae ki te rongo i te nei, kōrero i te nei wānanga. Kia kōrua, Hayley, kōrua kohana, tēnā kōrua. I tākoha mai i wā koutou kura, i whāngai mai i wā koutou mātauranga, hei oranga mō tātou, a te iwi Māori nei, tēnei te mihi mata kui kui kia kōrua. Tēnā koutou. Kia ora everyone. Welcome to this uh, conversation, this wānanga, uh, this space for us to share and reflect on the incredible paper that has been penned by Hannah Burgess and Hayley Koroi, Intergenerational Intimacies, a Whakapapa Conceptualization of Kai. I get the uh, incredible privilege to be in conversation uh, with these two Marekura. Uh, about this paper and if you haven't read it already where have you been but also um, we will put the link to the paper uh, in the chat for you to uh, download read digest uh, and enjoy its fabulousness um, we do have a couple of acknowledgements that we do want to make for the paper um, obviously Hannah and Hayley are the authors the minds the wonderful um, <clears throat> writers and researchers behind the paper, but also you'll note, um, for those of you that have seen it, the beautiful visuals that come with this particular um, piece of work. So he mihi tēnei kia Sam Bailey, kōrua ko Sonia Milford, uh, for their beautiful visual storytelling that accompanies the words. Uh, and the photos are by Hana herself, taken in Wānanga at Wai. Marae. So tēnei te mihi nunui. Uh, the paper is more than just words, uh, it's more than just the visuals, uh, and I think those of you that have engaged with the paper already will probably share the sentiment um, that it does take you on a journey uh, and it embodies all of the things uh, that it speaks to as well. To start our wānanga, this is a wānanga about pai, it is a reframing of kai uh, in really nuanced and interesting ways. Um, it is a very carefully and thoughtfully researched piece of work. Uh, it is an incredibly beautifully written and visually presented piece of work with a depth of kōrero that I think requires multiple readings. And so I'm excited that we are here to unpack um, some of the pieces of the paper and there is an incredible care and attention to detail that spreads right across this paper, right through to citational practice as well. So I just want to acknowledge the care uh, that has gone into, gone into this work. And for our participants, um, we've had over 600 registrations for this webinar. I think that speaks to... Um, the hunger, may I use the pun, I won't use too many of them, I promise, but the hunger for this kind of mahi uh, as well. Um, and so as a starting point, we actually want to invite you all, uh, those who are listening at home and your offices, wherever you might be, to participate in this intimate understanding of kai by reflecting for a moment on your own kai experiences. And so we want you to <clears throat> sit for a moment and think about a memorable kai experience that brings to mind the tastes, the textures, the smells, the sounds that you can hear, the people you were with, the places that you were, 
Um, and we're just going to take a minute. We're going to take a minute to sit in silence, to reflect, to draw forward and call on those memories. Um, and if you want to, please feel free to share with us um, maybe what the kai was or where you were or what the smell was, um, what the sound was about this particular kai moment uh, that you um, uh, are drawing into this webinar space. So we'll just take maybe 30 seconds to reflect on that. So as you are reflecting <laughs> on your kai experience um, and if you do want to share please please do share in the chat what that what that moment is for you um, we're going to introduce ourselves and share our our little kai uh, memory so he uri tēnei nō raukawa ki te kaukauro pā te tere e mihi ana uh, ko Naomi Simmons tōku ingoa um, I descend from the waters of the Waikato and Waiho rivers um, and was raised under the maru of Wharepuhunga Maunga over in the Waikato uh, area. And I um, get to facilitate the conversation. It's a real honour. My kai moment is from when I was maybe eight years old watching my grandmother, <clears throat> who I didn't know particularly well at that age, eat fish heads. And that was an experience for this little eight-year-old who had never seen anyone eat fish heads in my entire life. Um, the eyeballs, the sound of her sucking the eyeballs and the, the smell um, is what comes to mind for me. So I will hand over uh, to Hayley and Hannah to introduce themselves as well. Nga mihi. Uh, tēnā koe, Naomi, uh, o tira te komato te tonga whānui. Uh, me koutou hoki kua... Uh, ko whakatata mai nei tēnei ata. Um, ko ai ahau, uh, ko whakarongorua te maunga, ko awanui te awa, ko ngā toki mataawaurua te waka, ko mokonui arangi te marae, ko te ngahe ngahe te hapu, ko tauratu maru te tangata, uh, ko ngā puni mm -hmm. ko te raroa, ko ngā tikahu hoki oku iwi. Um, my name is Hayley. Uh, I work for a Māori public health organization called Toi Tangata and have been in public health for the last five or six years. Um, and in particular, uh, my role there is kaiarahi for the kaupapa kai Māori kai ora, which is also how this paper came about. So um, shout out to my colleagues at Toi Tangata also who, um, yeah, are just alongside me doing the work. Um, a kai memory... Uh, I think recently I had a boil up cooked for me um, by our beautiful friends, Kara and Sandy Lee, and it was eaten over gossip, <laughs> which I feel is like the right context in which to gossip is like when you're eating. And um, it was funny because I had this moment of like thinking about my dad actually, and really missing my dad because um whenever we were unwell or like needed comforting, he would always show his kind of love through food and through boil up. And so we're kind of joking that like every boil up is like a portal to every other boil up you've ever had. So like, um, yeah, I just remembered my dad in that moment and thought about all the ways that he nurtures <laughs> our Fano through Kukai. Yeah. So kia ora. A tēnā tātou, a tēnā koe Naomi, nā i whakatū whera i tō tātou hui, a o tira tēnā tātou. A, ko roha roha te maunga, ko waiarohi a te awa, e rere nei ki te ripo, kei reira a rai te uru rawa ko niniwa ngā kaitiaki o te wahapū o hokianga, ko ngā toki matawaurua te waka, ko kokohui a te whenua, ko te whakarongotai te marae, ko ngāti korokoro, ngāti whārara, te pauka ngā hapū, uh, ko ngā pohi te roroa te ati haunui a paparangi ngāti tūwhare toa ngā iwi, uh, ko Hannah Burgess tōku ingoa. Um, we're calling in from our whare in the hokianga, the beautiful hokianga. Um, I'm really grateful to be here living on my own whenua. 
Um, we want to take a moment just as we open this space to acknowledge the Indigenous peoples around the world resisting imperialism and settler colonialism. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking particularly about the Kanak people of what is known as New Caledonia, um, the Indigenous peoples of Palestine, West Papua, Congo, Sudan, um, Indigenous peoples around the world. Um, we're here today recognizing that our struggle in Aotearoa as Māori is bound up in theirs mm. and so too is our liberation. Um, so as we get to have this conversation in the relative safety of our own home, um, they're never far from our thoughts. Uh, tenatato. Um, I'm a co-fapa Māori researcher and teacher at um, Auckland Uni in Te Kupinga Hawara Māori, the Department of Māori Health. Um, I work closely with my tuakana Donna Cormack um, and in my research, I've been thinking and theorizing about how for our generation, we can be in good relation with our mokupuna and our tupuna um, and, vision, and envision futures beyond settler colonialism. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of work in relation with our artist mates, our creative mm -hmm. mates, um, with our kuya and komatua and in the mata. Um, and this is really where mm -hmm. um, our work is anchored. Um, my, my Kai memory, um, the one that comes to mind is this peach tree that's just outside our kitchen. Um, mm -hmm. when we first moved home, we've been, we moved home to the Hokianga two years ago. Um, and when we first moved, this peach tree was like fruiting and it was kind of like, hello. <laughs> and we were like, okay. <laughs> shit okay we need to deal with those peaches it was like calling for us and so we kind of spent our first few weeks um they can't we kind of spent these first few weeks um processing these peaches and bottling them oh people can't see me no nah. <laughs> um anyway I'm like do you want to jump into my screen <laughs> <laughs> um, peaches. We're, we're actually next to each other um, and so there's this peach tree just outside our whare and we were kind of called to process these peaches bottle them and then we had an abundance of peaches and so we were sharing peaches with our Fano and I guess thinking about portals as well um, they were golden queen peaches and everyone who we shared these peaches with um stories of my nan, of my great nana, of my namesake Hana, and of my Fano, um, the Riki Fano and Kokohuya would just kind of pour out of people. I was taken to her kitchen and the way she would bottle them and have them like stacked on shelves. Mm -hmm. And um I think those peaches were really the opening to me being back home. And it was just beautiful the way that they were just kind of outside our window calling on us. Mm -hmm. um so yeah golden queen peaches um all right tenatato can yeah. i see now can i move back <laughs> oh my God. Kia ora kōrua. i think <clears throat> because we're using one audio across Haley and hannah's um when you talk hannah at, at spotlights Haley. Okay. um so we'll have a tutu around with the technology thank you everyone for your patience around the um the chat and also around getting to see Everyone, very important. Um, let's get into our conversation. And I think um, in your introduction, you've already kind of started to, to touch on um, the first partai that I had. But I, um, so I might move to another partai. But I do want to start by acknowledging um, the queer um, in your lives uh, and that you spoke about in the paper um, and really foregrounding the importance of those memories of our. Um, of our kui, our komata, our tupuna, um, and how they come uh, to inform and feed um, where we are in the present and moving into the future. And I think for me, what stood out in your paper, um, and I and I want to mihi to you both for acknowledging what is going on um, as a result of settler colonialism around our world, um, both here in Aotearoa, um, but also in in much more violent um, or visibly violent ways. Uh, elsewhere as well because I think there's a real stark contrast that comes through in your paper around um, the way that settler colonialism is violent and extractive and compartmentalizes 
uh, and it's very one dimensional versus what you offer in the paper around Kai as being incredibly nuanced. Um, our conceptualization conceptualizations of Kai are generative, they're life giving, um, they're intergenerational and they're collective. And I think that really um, stands true at a very individual level. Um, for us and thinking about our memories of food, um, but also of kai, sorry, um, but also as as collectives. So I guess um, I'm really interested to understand what motivated you. Um, what was the motivation? How did you land on uh, doing this particular piece of work? Hmm. Um, yeah, I guess for me, as we started to kind of delve into the paper, I was reflecting a lot on my experiences as a young Māori woman, uh, in particular, like between the ages of 16 and 24, and, and how I was starting to realise that um, the world had an, a particular view of what it meant to be a woman that was like worthy of respect and like like basic respect and love. And I think I was like trying to meet this elusive um, bar that had been set for a long time and I think in the exhaustion of like coupled with like a the exhaustion of of like pursuing this like illusory like standard alongside a lot of the work that I had started to do alongside an organization called Te Kuroi Aroha Aotearoa, uh, who work in Indigenous education and training uh, I I realized that actually I it's highly likely that I know my body way better than anyone else knows my body and that that was actually a responsibility that I had um, to start to to be in better relation with my body not only that to, um, to understand that my body is like a portal to generations of women generations of tupuna and that there's so much wisdom in that. And so that's where I really started. I suppose this journey started for me and coming to Toy Tangata and like my original title was actually um, lead in nutrition and training, which was like, the, I was kind of this very visceral internal dilemma of like, I don't ever in my work, I don't ever want kind of that shame to be perpetuated through my own writing and through my own work. And I don't want another Māori woman to ever feel that through me specifically and the narratives that I kind of put out into the world. And so I think, yeah, I, I needed a different way to understand who I was in the world and um, what my body could do and be and the expansive ways that I could exist beyond the physical also. And so that's where this paper for me was um, as much about like reconciling my, um, yeah, with my younger self and yeah, who I continue to, I suppose, become in the world now alongside my community and my whanau. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think for me, um, Alongside kind of Haley's Haley's mahi, um, I've been th I've been thinking a lot in my work about refusal, and I think that's really where this paper um, came out of was this this desire to like refuse settler colonial um, impositions of the way that we see our bodies, like Haley spoke to, and the way that we see Kai. And I had been reading um, the work of Eve Tuck and Kay Wayne Yang who talk about refusal as theoretically generative and refusal as more than a no and it kind of opens up to the possibilities and they say that um, like refusal and the no saying no is um, a redirection to possibilities like otherwise unimaginable and so kind of in this moment where we started writing the paper we were kind of clear about what we wanted to refuse we wanted to refuse um hierarchies of race class and gender we wanted to refuse western notions of health and health as individual um and how that saturates public health mm -hmm. and still a lot of maori public health work we do too which mm -hmm. is deeply kind of individualistic and that kind of became clear and then we opened up to the yes and like so well what is kai then 
what it what is wellness and it kind of like opened up the space to consider and it was actually kind of hard and that's what this paper really was was like the yes and like what do we how do we want to feel how do we want to how do we want our mokopuna to feel where are we in this kind of whakapapa of of kai um so in that it became a lot about really seeing and understanding settler colonialism but in that being able to see through it and beyond it and kind of envision with our tupuna um kai mm -hmm. and to call them into the conversation mm -hmm. and to acknowledge that they know and we know as tupuna we know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so yeah so that's kind of where the kind of paper opened up for us and then we just have so much beautiful mahi in the kopapa maori space in these indigenous mm -hmm. black and indigenous theor theoretical spaces to really draw from um so in that sense it didn't feel like we were doing anything new we mm -hmm. were kind of just yeah. calling in this kind of this mahi that was happening around us in our whānau community and in our like kind of more academic work mm -hmm. yeah Kia ora, tēnā kōrua. Um, and it's it's fantastic to hear you talk about that process. Um, you know, sometimes we see a finished product and think, oh, this is, you know, and it, it is, yes, it is a fuck yes, if I'm honest, and read the paper <laughs> and, and bring all of that into the room. When you read it, there is an element of, um, well, for me, there was an element of this is so obvious but being so hidden you know, a kind of every time I read, um, particularly when we moved in, when you moved into, you know, Kaya's Taya or Kaya's Collective, Kaya's, all of these different things, it was kind of like, yes, of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. This is an obvious kind of puku <laughs> knowing a, about these things, but also why has it not, why is it not as obvious in, in across both our health domains, but also if I think about, you um, the work we're doing Deep South National Science Challenge, you know, thinking about it as it applies in, in the climate change space uh, as well. And I just really want to acknowledge that refusal <laughs> and that um, really powerful refusal, but also, Hayley, what you talked about, the exhaustion of having to do that work mm -hmm. um, of unpacking and, and refusing. Um, and I think this is a really powerful thing uh, e know for us all to, to think about is that saying no, you know, what you said, Hannah, can open up the possibilities for the unimaginable um, mm -hmm. and, and what can be invited in. And you've invited in whakapapa and whanaungatanga um, in really interesting and, and, again, nuanced ways, concepts that we talk about a lot within Te Ao Māori that are used a lot um, in a lot of our policy around health and even around um, our taio as well and I'm just wondering if you can unpack the way that you've engaged with these concepts in the paper and its significance in the context of kai a little bit more um so yeah our work around um whakapapa and whanaungatanga came out of work that I've done previously with my friend Te Kahuratai painting um where we kind of Really, again, it's concepts that we talk about a lot, but really considering kind of how we can deeply engage with these concepts of whakapapa and whanaungatanga in how we can see the world and how we can understand Māori ways of being, knowing and doing. And it's moving away from this idea of whakapapa as kind of like direct genealogical descent, um, which is very biological and linear, um, towards this understanding of whakapapa that is ever expansive. Um, I'm influenced here by the work of Matua Moana Jackson, Animi Kaire, um, Leonie Pihama, um, and really kind of seeing whakapapa as this ever expansive unfolding network of relationships that connects all of us to each other and to the world around us. Um, and the key lessons through Whakapapa is that we are all whanaunga and as tangata, we are but one small layer of existence and actually in creation, we are taina. And so being taina to te taiao means we have a responsibility to honour and uphold the network of relationships that, that hold us, that we're suspended in. Mm. Um, 
and in that whakapapa is also about the future. So it's just as much about our tupuna as it is our mokopuna. Um, and so from there, in seeing ourselves as these meeting points of past and future generations um, was really kind of the framework from which we understood kai. Um, and so really seeing kai as like the tip or this kind of just manifestation of generations of whanaungatanga of relationships. Mm. Um, we think about it in terms of whanaungatanga ki ngā atua, whanaungatanga ki te taiao, whanaungatanga ki te tangata, and whanaungatanga ki a koe, whanaungatanga ki a koe ano, so relationships with our atua, um, with te taiao, the natural world, with other people and with the self. And so kai kind of like emerges, um, emerges, as this like tip um and yeah maybe we could share about Pataki for example yeah, or yeah I wanna... suppose it made me write in writing the paper I reflected a lot around the concept of like manakitanga and especially I think we all can relate to the context of marae in particular and what you're fed kind of like conveys the mana of the marae and I I think so much about how um, the reconceptualizing of kai that's kind of been imposed upon us means that like what you like you're kind of reflecting on this very flat one-dimensional layer of what it means to like eat something in the context of the marae whereas like when we broaden our vision to think about these layers of whakapapa actually through like if we use pātiki as an example you're thinking about like the mana of the moana and of tangaroa and of hinemoana and of the generations who have stewarded that moana uh, and of, you know, the knowledge holders who know when to harvest and of those that harvested and of those that prepare the kai. And so I think, um, yeah, our vision of all that is uh, encompassed in the serving of a pātiki becomes so much more broadened and I think like that's the beautiful thing about Tao Māori and about whakapapa mm. it is that it brings our communities it brings our collectives into our vision and reminds us that we're actually deeply intertwined in these communal contexts mm. and also these contexts alongside te tai ao. Yeah, kia ora, kia ora porua. Um, and I think um, just having scrolled through some of the offerings that um, those who are listening deeply to this kōrero have shared um, really reflects exactly what you're saying around that broadening and the expansiveness that sits in the concepts of whakapapa and whanaungatanga. Um, again, reading your paper and reflecting on my own experiences, they are expansive, they're positive, they're connected, they're connective, um, and they offer in this ability to connect um, a very personal, visceral, as an individual, as a body, um, out across generations, across time, um, but also geographically to our taio in ways that um, I think... And, and we've touched on this a little bit, but I think in ways that the extractive and extremes of settler colonialism um, seek to sever, right? Mm -hmm. They seek to sever those connections, um, mm -hmm. the physical, the spiritual, the emotional, um, the the ingested connections that we have um, with our taio. Um, when I read your work, and I know you've drawn on um, a little bit of Kyle White's work as well, but I'm thinking in the context again of um, our hononga to our taiao, um, he talks about, uh, in relation to climate change, he talks about these, the, the we talk a lot about the ecological tipping point. And I think in health, we talk a lot about, you know, health crisis and, and crises around our well-being. Um, but he moves into an indigenous space and talks about the relationality and the importance of relationality and relational tipping points um, as ways to or as relationality as ways to I guess support our own resilience as individuals and as collectives um, both in relation to 
um, what's happening in our environment, but also um, what's happening, I guess, in terms of health. So I wonder, that was a very complicated statement. I apologise. I'm going to synthesise it into a straightforward <laughs> question. I wonder if you can reflect um, a little bit uh, on the paper. Um, what is What are the possibilities that come from moving beyond settler colonialism, beyond those extremes, beyond that extractivism, what are the possibilities that that you can see that you um, have offered in this paper? I think like firstly, what I will say is that like the more deeply we can understand settler colonialism, I think the wider our the scope of our imagining can be because we can be sure that settler colonialism and the way that it functions isn't like reaching into our visions of the future. And so the the more deeply we know and understand it, I think the, yeah, the scope of what we can imagine really opens up. Mm. Um, but honestly, it's just endless. <laughs> I mean, like it's truly, it can, I mean, it can range from things like just, eating a, me a meal more mindfully to like connecting with your neighbors and mm. and like I think so much of what we've realized through the paper in writing it and in living in in like the wake of the paper also is like our lives are so locally embedded and our um, the reality of our lives is is really it's all happening in the context of our local relationships and that's something that you cannot escape and I think uh, Cyclone Gabriel really brought that to the fore for me is like when the power is cut and you have no reception the people that you look to um, are your neighbours are your direct neighbours are people across the road are people down the marae um, are your you know the whānau that live within your direct vicinity and so I think we're often looking for answers that are far away, that are like less personal and require less, um, I suppose, personal buy-in. But I actually think that the answers are really close and they're really nearby and we can just start right where we are. And yeah. The peach tree. Right the peach tree. <laughs> oh my God, the burden of having to <laughs> bottle peaches and pijos every year no it's a great burden and it's, don't, a, don't, it's, it's good vibes no 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 <laughs> no it's like it's a it's a responsibility that we feel because you know we just get to show up and like harvest and we get to like live again in the wake of the yeah. mahi of our tupuna um much of like much of which has actually been disrupted so the peach yeah, tree yeah. is like the fact that the peach tree lives on I think for me even like deepens my sense of responsibility mm -hmm. um to like harvest the peaches and to like uh honor I suppose the work that they did to feed us their mokopuna um mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I think for me like seeing beyond colonialism and like seeing whanaungatanga and really centering whanaungatanga um is around the ways that we can build community and build community through kai um and I really look to the work of our friends Charles and Grace at um Soil of Cultures um and our friend David also known as Matt Maker um, <laughs> and they um they really show us the the power and the um the intimacies that Kai can bring in different contexts. Cause I'm aware, you know, we live in the Hokianga, we live on our Fenua. Um, but this Kai can be a portal for those of us who who live anywhere and who are in relation with people from different cultures and different communities. Mm -hmm. Um and I think my realization about growing Kai, big ups to Matt. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And I think like one re realization that I had about Kai is that it demands communal effort, like it demands interdependence and same with being in good relation with Taiao and recognizing that Kai isn't separate from Te Taiao is Te Taiao, like it's not possible to move into futures where we're well as separate individuals, like it's not a uh, um, it's not like a nice little top layer for Nongatanga. It like has to be really at the core of what we do. Um, and we acknowledge that a lot of the foods that a lot of the kai that we're in relation with today 
um, will have its whaka papa and it's it's um, it would have been harvested by generations of whānau from other lands and each of those whānau will have their own stories and their own whakapapa and tikanga, much of which has been um, damaged and disrupted. Mm -hmm. And so I think through kai, um, we can begin to see the ways that we are connected and we can learn and share and um, sit at tables and just have a kōrero, I think, in so many ways we can build solidarity and community around kai. So I really want to mihi to our friends and in particular um, migrant communities who I think really show us that and show us the way that Kai mm. can connect us across oceans. Mm, kia ora, kia ora. And I think, you know, you've, you have, you've talked and, and I guess invited us to lean in to the personal responsibility that we have to communities and to, to those connections and the the hua that can come from those, but also the the work, the labour that is involved in bottling all of the things. I'm reminded, actually, I grew for the first time last year um, broad beans. No, not yeah, broad beans. My mum told me, grow broad beans, they're easy. And I grew all these broad beans, so many of them. And me and my daughter sat and we shelled and reshelled because they have two shells, reshelled these broad beans only to end up with this tiny handful mm. of broad beans. And it kind of, when you were talking there, I thought, yeah, you know, like to to feed our communities, to engage in a way that supports uh, oranga for our people, for our communities, it requires many of us because my little handful of broad beans is not going <laughs> to feed all of us. Um, you know, it gave us one little, one little, one little kai for our fano. But I think that you know what you've talked about around the responsibility, leaning into that deep responsibility, but also the reciprocity that comes from that, the labour and work that comes with that, and then also the proximity. Yeah. that that requires of us to our environment and for me again your conceptualizations of kai as payao as relational as community as collective as critical analysis again was so mind-blowing but so normal um and i think that's the beauty of what you do uh, in the paper i am um weary and I have invited um, those who are listening to start to offer in some questions. And I would like to leave time for um, questions from those that are um, <clears throat> that are listening in um, so that we can expand the conversation broader than than just ourselves. Um, but I did want I've got I've got a couple of, of questions. Um, one, I think. Um, you've touched on already, but I am really interested in Kaya's solidarity, Kaya's critical analysis, um, particularly in the in the context of the world that we're living in now. So, I just wondered if I can invite um, invite you both to share some of your thoughts around um, around that element of the uh, of the paper. Yeah, I think. I think in seeing with our tūpuna and envisioning futures for our mokopuna, we can't. We have to deeply engage with settler colonialism, and um, we have to engage with white supremacy. We have to um, be critical of hierarchies of race, class, and gender that are imposed on us, on communities, and made to seem natural and normal. Um, and so, I think that is a big part of the work and a big part of this paper because it's necessary as our generation. Um, and so I think, I think what that, I think in centering solidarity, it is really um, being in good relation with ourselves and with others that are doing the work. Um, I think to the work my friend Ash Gillen is doing around fat phobia and mana momona and mana wahine in that space. And I think about the critical work that's happening, um, especially in, in, in spaces like black feminism and in the abolition space, which I've been um, introduced to through my tuakana, Donna Cormac mm -hmm. and Jax Aramoana. And I think that these complexities, um, we can hold them yes. and we can make sense of them. But also the reason we can do this is because it's collective work and because it's not just up to us as individuals. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there as well, what the collective work tells me is that it's okay to rest when we need. 
Um, and it's okay to not to not rush the work because it is intergenerational and we can find our space our plot to garden in, if I could use a garden metaphor. Um, <laughs> and that I think that really is what a solidarity is about. And it's about recognizing um, that work. And I'm also thinking too um, about disability justice and really untangling ableism, which I think we saw a lot through the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm thinking of all these intersecting, shout out Keta and Jace, our friends who are to kind of for us in that space. Um, <laughs> But I think in these complexities, I think Papa and Whanaungatanga allows for complexities. Complexities aren't something that we want to flatten and smooth out and mm -hmm. make to seem simple. It's the natural state of the world. And it, I think Matauranga Māori and Papa allows for that complex thinking. Um, so I really want to shout out to the people I've named who are all referenced. I think the reference <laughs> list of the paper is like a good, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm. I think critical analysis I think for me some sometimes it's about whanaungatanga and sometimes it's also about like recognizing moments when our privilege means that we're actually perpetuating systems of settler colonialism and so like yes whanaungatanga is is the thing like we have to like be in good relation with kai and with taiao and with community. And I think in that you will inevitably come across moments when your privilege is kind of the barrier to moving through and beyond, yeah, beyond settler colonialism. And I suppose that's the moment where you have to like consider what your action, like what is the best course of action, I suppose. And we do talk about like, sometimes it's stepping back Sometimes it's speaking up. Um, sometimes it's, you know, it's a, it can be many, many things and it can be many things alongside other people also. But yeah, so this is, um, it's like interesting because on the one hand, like what I really want to convey through this paper is that it's okay to feel joy and it's okay to feel pleasure and satisfaction. And that I think food I think especially as colonized peoples living in, under settler colonialism, I want the world that my mokopuna to live in to be one where they can experience joy. But to get there, we also have to move through a lot of discomfort. And we have to kind of like step away from these hierarchies of race, class and gender that make us feel worthy. Because in, 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 in deriving our worth from them, we also you know, the hierarchies work so that someone is at the bottom. And so, like, I think it's going to take a lot of, like, personal, like, grieving even and, like, discomfort to let go of those things mm -hmm. that make us feel worthy above above other people. And so, yeah, but the great thing is, is that I hope what you will find is that you fall into community and that you fall into, like, the love of your, the wider collective of people that you're with. Um, and so, yeah, I suppose, like, I want to shout out to our friends, like our friends that allow that us to do that, to like work through these things with. And I hope that everybody has those spaces where they can really like make sense of the world alongside other people who are doing the same. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to move now so that we've got a little bit of time. There are a few questions um, that have come from, uh, from those that are, um, listening and watching in. So, um, Hina koe uh, kira, um, Sherwood O'Regan, he pātai tāna. Um, so she's asked, we've got a question from Kira, are there any unexpected practices or changes you've made as a result of your learning and theorising on kai and relationality in this space? I think enjoying kai. <laughs> enjoying it like yeah. we love it it's it's the shit mm. <laughs> and really enjoying it and really appreciating it have mo having moments and I think loving myself more and um yeah mm. eating more <laughs> yeah I think for me it's been I think because we garden at the Kokohuya Komatua flats um for me, it's been the connection to Komatua that's actually been really life-changing. 
um, just because we like see them almost every day and um, Kai, like the garden, because it was actually them and their wisdom that they offered us this plot to garden in. And so that meant that we were there like almost every day and we would see them every day and we would talk to them and we would help them fix the TV and <laughs> tech support. We are the official <laughs> tech support of the, of the Kokohoya Komato. But I think like what being along being alongside Komato has taught me is that like the world that we live in now has not always been this way. Not only that, it's like a lot of like supermarkets as an example, like not only has it not always been this way, but it's very recent that things have that, for example, like supermarkets have become the primary means of get, of, of obtaining food. Mm -hmm. And so like, I think to me, you need to talk to Komatua because they just provide some perspective and help you zoom out, um, zoom out and understand that things have been different and they will continue to change. And that that's mm -hmm. where you can make sense of the part that you have to play or can play in continuing to shape what the future will look like. Um, another part I, uh, Tarapuhi Waiyo, um, as a whanau who is at high risk of COVID, our ability to connect with others through Kai has been constrained after people's desire to take precautions has dropped and saying that the sharing of Kai safely has become an even more intimate and intentional experience. I wonder how disease and Kai illuminates the link between Kai and relationships for you. Question. That is such a beautiful question. And I, I want to acknowledge the work that you're doing in this space. Um, and I really appreciate you bringing that into conversation. Um, this has been really at the forefront of Haley and I's journey in this paper as well. Um, I have long COVID, and we we are we are we acknowledge that we are still in a pandemic, and this too has mediated our relationships with Kai. Um, and I think one thing for us is to really sink into Kai as being about te taiao and really taking time to kind of decenter our human relations and really get to know our more than human whanaunga, really get to know the shore, the beach, the um, the awa and um, the kai stories that come from that. Um, and I think that's one way that we've managed it, but I think it is really hard. And I think this needs to be an ongoing conversation that we have with our whanau mm -hmm. um, because it it's complex. And I think I think, yeah, it really for me was about zooming out and kind of shifting, shifting the way that we relate to Kai and the Taiao being a beautiful portal for that um, during during the pandemic. Did you want to add anything to that? I think just really briefly, through the research that we're actually doing through the Deep South Challenge, um, alongside um, Kai Paramarai, we heard a lot of stories around when COVID, when we were in the midst of lockdowns. Um, Kai was really like a portal for Komatua to feel connected to other people. And that to me was really beautiful because it made like, even though we weren't allowed to gather, they felt looked after just through the Kai that was being shared. And it was like Kai that was really special to them, like oysters and, you know, things that they really loved. And so I thought that was just like a really beautiful sharing from, from those, um, those that worked during COVID-19 mm -hmm. yeah that made me think of the um cyclone Gabriel as well we were hit quite um bad up here we lost power and my auntie made a comment that was like this is the most visitors we've had in years because mm -hmm. when when we were in crisis we were caring for Komatua and we were visiting them and dropping off Kai and it made us realize that we don't actually just have to do this in crisis. We should be doing this like kind yeah. of every day. And so like, I think as well, yeah, that that was a huge lesson from that time. Mm. And like what we can learn from crisis, we can, mm. we can let it shift us and let it, yeah. let it change us and change our every day. Mm. Kia ora. Um, there is one part I in the chat that I would like to offer. Oh, we've got a few more, actually, we've got more part coming through. 
Um, I'm just trying to find it because there's so much chat happening. Good stuff. Um, oh, tēnā koe tūnā ne kani. Um, he pātai, wondering if anyone has researched a whakapapa for wai u. If you've come across anything in your... <clears throat> no, have not come across that. And I, <laughs> um, yeah. It was quite funny writing this paper. What that's just bringing to mind is like how truly vast this space is. And we had to really preface it that there are realms that we cannot like dive into because they are realms in and of themselves. And so, um, yeah, I I can't speak to that personally, but I would love mm -hmm. if yeah. anyone else has because that's such a beautiful and interesting space. Mm. All right, Tika. Ai, te katera whakaaro, um, and beautiful question uh, as well. Um, just one more partai that's come through, Katarina Davis. Um, what can people do or change in their everyday to connect more, particularly if in the city? Hmm. Yeah, I think I can, I think one thing that, um, one thing that kind of nutrition gets us into the headspace of is like having prescribed answers to questions because it kind of like offers a prescribed solution. And I think that's where we're trying to move away from because really the answers that we have or the solutions that we can kind of come up with arise out of a very particular set of relations that we have based here in the Hokianga. Mm -hmm. with our neighbors with the whānau that live here and saying that um, I know Vandana Shiva has mentioned that she thinks every person should grow at least one plant in their home um, just to like be connected to the living world mm -hmm. um, the living growing unfolding world and so I think that's one small thing that we can do um, in the city um, she yeah she shares that as a spiritual practice acknowledging that you can't you can't like save the world but you can see the world in a plant and you can care for that plant mm -hmm. she said it way more eloquently but yeah sorry but yeah I think the more we kind of and you have to be kind of brave and curious about how you do this mm -hmm. um, but yeah just like reach out to your neighbors, look like, not to like spy on people, but like see who's growing food in your neighborhood and like be curious about that. And like, um, you know, just take some kai over to your neighbors if you've yeah, ever got yeah. too much. And I think like caring for people through food, especially when they're unwell, mm -hmm. has been a really beautiful thing to do just to like offer to, we'll make dinner tonight and we'll drop mm -hmm. some off. So yeah, like the realms of, practice are like yeah. ever expanding and yeah I think starting yeah. where you are um is the is the first yeah. step really yeah I think and I think what I'd add to that is um learning to make those recipes that you love that people in your whānau make for you like see it as an opportunity to to, to learn from them, to be able to make that for people that you love and thinking about all this kai that we've named, like how are we, how are we carrying those, those on? Mm -hmm. um, Hayley and I both grew up in Tamaki. We both grew up as city kids. And I just think about still the ways that boil up, boil up portals were everywhere <laughs> and that we had fruit trees mm -hmm. and that um, I see the way that my mum makes our whanau, um takako recipe um and how that that has been a really beautiful connection to my aunties and the way that she makes it I tried to get, ask her to teach me but she it's all vibes she <laughs> feels like this do a bit like this but that's how she was taught by my auntie and so it's just things like that that I'm like how these are little ways that we can do wherever we are even mm. it's not directly related to Kai but just being in touch with Fano. Mm -hmm. and talking to them and um <laughs> yeah I think just to add one more thing which I learned from Grace and Charles is like when you're about to like set a table like talk about the food 
like talk about why you cook this or where the food came from. And I think like Amitav Ghosh, who was one of the key theorists in this paper, talks about how stories are so important. They're at the center of like what it means to refuse settler colonialism. And that's to, you know, bring the mana of our kai, all of these expansive layers, bring them all to the table and make us all aware of them, you know, before mm -hmm. we're about to eat. And I think that in itself is like world shifting. Yeah. And here I'm really reminded again through Fucker Papa, it's not about what we eat in terms of like kai as objects, mm. but it's about how we eat. It's mm. about how we think about kai. It's about how we relate to one another. It's about how we consider the kai on our tables as expansive. Mm. And yeah. Mm. Beautiful. We, can you believe it or not, have reached the end of our time. There are a huge number more questions uh, and comments in the chat, which we will look over after the webinar. And Tira Pia, um, just a, a thought for Hayley and Hannah to consider. There may need to be a part two to this conversation, um, given the, the number of questions and, and the pathways um, that I think um, this corridor can take us. Um, I want to thank you, though, for um, the generosity in that you've shared today, but also in the paper, the time that has gone into thinking really carefully and um, and putting this paper together. Um, it is brave. It is expansive. It is joyful. It is um, all of the things that you... Um, invite us to uh, um, to consider about kai. I think your paper represents. Um, so kute hai ipe nei me te waihunga. Um, you know, it is sweet. It is delicious. Um, it is something that I think we will be able to come back to time and time again. Um, and so just to wrap up, I actually want to leave everyone with some questions to consider in the context of your own relationship with Kai, your own relationality with Kai, um, based on what we've heard um, today. So some questions for you all to take away is what can you say no to that will open up unimaginable possibilities? What can you refuse today that will lead you to a place of community and connection and joy? How can you be in good relation to yourself today? How can you be in good relation to your taiao, to your tupuna and to your mukupuna? Uh, and the other part I, I want you to consider is what can you eat, cook, grow, share, today with Kai that will uh, embolden what we've heard today, that will bring you joy, that will bring you nourishment on all layers of the nourishment scale, um, our wairua, our hinengaro, um, our tinana, our whanau, our hapu, our whenua, all of those beautiful layers. Um, I thank you both for offering um ways in which we can relate to kai but also to ourselves uh, mm -hmm. and to each other that hold the complexity of our worlds mm -hmm. um, that don't try and stifle uh, all of the various feelings that we may have in navigating that complexity uh, that we can do that in a way that is collective and that is joyful and that is expansive and that we can rest we can garden we can cook, we can bottle peaches, we can do all of those things. Um, so tēnei te mihi nunui, kia, kia kōrua, kia koutou, um, uh, i, i noho i o koutou kainga, i rungo i tēnei. Um, thank you for engaging in the chat. There's so much in there, we're going to have to take time to, to go back through. Um, finally, I just um, forgot to at the start acknowledge uh, Ruia and Irina uh, Perehama for their words in the karakia that we started this webinar with so I just want to make sure um, and the last thing for you all to consider before we leave and I am going to throw this to Hayley and Hannah very quickly 
but what is the kai, what is the dish that comforts and grounds you? So very quickly, Hana, Hayley, and then we will finish with Karakia. This is going to sound ridiculous, but Kina. <laughs> I'm just going to say that because like, if I can put out into the universe that Kina might show up at my whare, then I'm going to take that. <laughs> <laughs> The, the first thing that comes to mind is chocolate. I <laughs> fucking love chocolate and I want to go eat chocolate after this. <laughs> I think well deserved kinna and chocolate uh, for both of you. And for me, um, rewana bread is always the thing that grounds me. And just a really quick note, one of my uncles used to make it and he used to post it out to us, our nieces and nephews from Tamaki Makoto. He found a courier who would package up his rewana and he would send it out to us. So I'm going to um, remember him and his beautiful rewana making and the fact that he sent it across Koro Mitai. Look, someone Hi, shout out. knows it is Koro Mitai. He used to send us all rewana. So, naira te mihi nunui kia kōrua. Um, ka whakakapi tēnei wānanga hei karakia. Te whakaitanga e, te whakaitanga e. Tēnei te wānanga ka ea. Tēnei te mauri o te wānanga ka ea. Tēnei te mauri o te wānanga ka whakamoe a koa ki runga, koa ki raro, haumi e, hui e, tāiki e. Kia ora. Kia ora, tēnā tātou. <laughs>